Hey guys, well, here we are back out at it again, uh, and I am in my studio space recording my green screen once again, as opposed to standing up out at the hangar behind my green screen. I figured this is, uh, this is a good process. This seems to work pretty well, so uh, I'm going to keep doing it this way for the time being until... I just decide to change. Sometimes I think of things while I'm out there, and so I do them there. Other times I, I won't think of stuff until I get back here. So, yeah, that's where I'm here. So in the video today, what you're watching me do is work on putting together those front, um, well, basically everything. I, this is it. This is the big video where I'm starting to put together and actually rivet all of the pieces and parts to um, finalize that front fuselage area. Pardon me while I clean my glasses. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's a pain in the butt. This area, especially right here where I'm working, where I'm going and I'm doing those, uh, those forward pieces that attach to the firewall, and, and that's the part with the steel and all that other stuff. Awkward as hell. Um, and I had to drill a couple things out while I was there because uh, I had... I had opened up a bunch of different containers of the different size rivets that I would need and then promptly grabbed the wrong rivet out of the wrong container. And so I was using rivets that were too long in a couple places. And so I'd put the bucking bar on there and I'd get the gun lined up and I'd start to buck it because there's just no good way to do it otherwise. And the, the rivet would lay over and I'm like, what the hell? And I just kept thinking that, man, I, it's so awkward that I'm not getting the bucking bar in there square and that's why it's laying over. Uh, and, and then eventually I realized what I was doing and that I, I had grabbed the wrong rivet and, and yeah, so, uh, this was a pain in the butt, but eventually I do get it to where it's, it's good to go. Um, I will show more later. So some of you guys have asked me to slow things down and actually show as I work in more, more real time. Uh, that's coming here later in the video. Uh, and a couple of a couple others of you have asked about my health after my uh, well-being and all that, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I feel fine. Uh, I some uh, where I'm wondering if I did not have a certain virus uh, that is going around that I think I'm not allowed to say because of algorithms. I don't know. Uh, they they won't test here uh, unless you are sh uh, exhibiting the exact symptoms. If you're not exhibiting the symptoms, then they won't test. They, they I think they have a limited number of tests is what it comes down to. I feel fine, but I could have been asymptomatic. But anyway, um, some of you have mentioned that I should not mention my health issues uh, for fear of not being able to get medical or whatnot. Uh, I will never lie. Um, I have to think that some of those rules are in place for a good reason, whether I agree with them or not. Uh, and so if, if lying is what I have to do in order to pass a medical, then I don't deserve to pass the medical. So uh, I'm never going to lie and intentionally deceive just in order to pass a medical. So uh, I have no major health issues, just weird things every once in a while. We probably all have. Right now I have a, a head cold. <coughs> um, or just I'm stuffy for whatever reason. But uh, I won't lie um, to, to pass a medical. I would rather fail the medical and then fly, you know, light sport or something else if, if that were a thing. Uh, I don't think – I'm not going to fail the medical. I'm not worried about that at all. So anyways – Thank y'all for who were concerned for my well-being. I'm good. Uh, I'm just, uh, I've got a lot of errands in the fire. You know how it is, life. Uh, so anyways, back to the video. Um, this side where I'm working, it's, it's, it's a pain. Um, I actually, you can see I kind of lifted the, the, the nose up as best I could by putting some, some weights in the back uh, to kind of push it down on the table and lift that front end up so I can get up under there and work on some of those things. And there was a lot of just back and forth trying to figure out the best way to do it. I did eventually, <clears throat> excuse me, I did eventually notice that if I pulled the floor out a little bit, I could get my squeezer up in there to do like the first four or five of those rivets. I forget how many of them are in there, but I, there were several of them that you cannot get any other way than through a bucking bar. And so suck it up, buttercup, you're using a bucking bar. Um, it's just awkward. That's the biggest complaint I have about this area is it was just really, really awkward 
But once I once I figured the little squeezer bit out, and here I am, I'm lifting the floor. Once I figured the little squeezer bit out and actually got in there and did the work, I think this side actually came out better than the other side. Um, now, some people may say, well, why, you know, are you going to drill out the other side and redo them? Um, no. And the reason for that is very simple. I think that it was good. First of all, I think it's good enough what I did on the other side. But the other thing is, and you know, my theory is good enough, uh, or perfection is the enemy of good enough. Uh, but the other thing is, is would I be doing more damage by drilling out a rivet that is good enough to put a rivet in that is perfect? Um, would that do more damage? And I, I think in some cases it would, because you're widening that hole, you're adding... Um, you're adding a degree of uncertainty when the, the, the rivet that was there was good enough. So what, this side definitely came out better than the other side. It just it did take me a little while to figure it out and actually get it working. But once I did, perfectly happy. Everything came out uh, the way it should have. Like I said, I, I wish I didn't have to do the, as many drill outs as I did. And I kept going back and forth and looking and comparing and using my little measuring tool to see if uh, what I had done was... Uh, correct, or if I needed to do something else. But ultimately, I was like, no, this is the way it's got to be. I will say that the, the rivet right up against the firewall, um, you have to use a stepped uh, uh, head on your, uh, 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 on your rivet gun because, again, you got to get, you got to get in there and it's, it's just awkward. That, that's my biggest complaint is the whole damn thing is awkward. Um, so the rest of this forward section or the rest of this part of this video that I'm working on is me working on getting all these forward rivets finally run and finally put in there. Do follow the plans for damn sure uh, around what to rivet in what order, of course, because there are uh, a number of things that you're going to put back in there that don't actually go back in there yet, like a couple of the support, a couple of the trusses and, 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 and uh, ribs don't actually go in there yet. And uh, if you do it out of order, you'll put them in there and then you'll realize that, holy crap, now what do I do? Because I've put this in out of order. Um, and that, that's, that's always a huge problem. Don't do things out of order. So anyways, let's keep looking at this and we'll talk about it here a little more. So here in the background, one of the things you do a lot of is look at the plans. I'm always looking at the plans, and I realize that I have to do some work on some skins. Uh, two of the skins specifically, I have to uh, uh, back rivet on a rib on either of the aft fuselage skins, and so I know I need my table for that. And so I go through and I pull the table out. Remember, the whole plane right now is sitting on the spars. I've got those uh, sawhorses on either side. with They're sitting on the spars. So the whole thing is just floating above the table. Uh, which at first I was leery of that, but honestly, those saw horses are solid, so I'm not really, it's fine, and, and it can't fall very far. But here you see I'm going through and I'm figuring out exactly how I'm going to do that with a uh, back rivet plate and just back riveting everything. And then, you know, then it's about getting my whole back rivet set up with the carpet and all that stuff. The, the carpet that I use there, which, got, which is cut out so that my back rivet plate will sit in there, uh, actually it brings the entire area that I'm working with up to the level of my back rivet plate so nothing's at kind of a funky angle. That's the whole idea behind it. Works really well, prevents scratches. That's another nice thing about it. Um, <clears throat> but then it's just a matter of going through and doing the typical back riveting thing, which is to put the part on there, put the rivets up underneath, tape the rivets on uh, so that I can actually see you know, they're, they're poking through correctly and then going through and doing the work of back riveting the two pieces together. In this case, I think on one of the skins, it was like five pieces or something like that because it was, it was the main rib that goes on there. And then like a shim, a number of different shims around the cargo door. Uh, and then, uh, the other side didn't have that. Obviously it was just the rib. So that's what's going on in this portion of the video. Uh, I really like back riveting. Uh, I think back riveting is actually a very good way to do a lot of the plane if you can get away with doing it. My, if I had my druthers, the perfect way to do everything is with a squeezer um, because, I mean, the consistency of a squeezer is the way to go. Um, someone asked a while back if they should get the 
uh, C style squeezer or the or the the, the, the the claw style Caesar squeezer, which, you know, one is, one is kind of the hook like this and it squeezes here. And the other one, it kind of does this number where it like pinches. Um, I, you could probably get away with either or both. Uh, I have seen in instances where both would be convenient. Um, I only have the, 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 the hook one that does here. I don't know what you call the difference. I don't know what the difference is. I have the standard squeezer, I think. Um, very expensive device, a squeezer, by the way, but absolutely worth it. Get one if you're building the plane. Back riveting, you're, you're going to do a lot of back riveting, but not as much. The squeezer is far more common, but uh, thankfully a back rivet plate is, I mean, it's just a plate of metal. And it's a, it's a heavy-duty piece of metal. It's cheap, and just you're going to need that to get it, and you'll be okay. Uh, so anyways, that's what's going on in this portion of the video, and now on to the next thing. All right, so once we get everything back riveted and put on and happy, uh, then we go through the process of hanging the skins onto uh, the, the fuselage, onto the frame. And again, I'm looking at the plans to make sure hmm, this is really where we're at because, uh, you know, we're, we're at that point of no return in many cases. But, yeah, that's where we're at. So it's a matter of just sitting there and slowly putting the skins on the plane and clicoing everything into place and making sure, again, as I said before, that we're doing everything in the right order because the last thing you want to do is do stuff in the wrong order. Um, this was weirdly cathartic. Um, putting there, you, you put things together and take things apart so many times during the course of the build that the final assembly, when you finally put um, these skins back on for, you know, the umpteenth time and, and are now like, okay, this is it. The last time this is going on here, it's a good feeling. It really is. It's one of those things like, oh, thank goodness. You know, it feels like, it feels like there's like a light at the end of the tunnel at that point. Um, because up to that point, it's, it's like, God, I'm just putting this on just to take it off again. And how many times do I have to do this? And you do, you have to do it a lot with everything. I mean, there's a lot of putting on and taking off. So when you do finally put the thing on for the final time and you know this is the last time I'm going to have to put in 4,000 Clecos. Um, I only have 325 so it's not 4,000 but you get my point. Uh, it, it's it's a good feeling. Uh, it really is. And uh, the view I was going for here was to kind of give you an idea as I was doing it and it's not a good view at all. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, like I said, some of you had talked about in a previous uh, request asking me to please slow things down and show you how I do stuff in a more real-time fashion. Uh, I don't like showing a lot of real-time because, as you'll see here shortly, real-time is boring. Um, it takes a long time to do very mundane things. Now, there are probably builders out there and that could crank this out a lot more quickly. Uh, I know if I were to build the same plane, again, I could probably do it in half the time that I've done it now, just because a lot of what I do is double check, read the plans again, check again, measure, make sure, uh, and then and then question myself all along. You know, Whereas once you've done it, it's like, oh, well, yeah, that's obvious and makes perfect sense. Why did I? Why was I even questioning myself? But I mean, you see, right now I keep going back to the plans. Like, eh, am I, are we sure we got there? You know. So um, that's the thing: is is real time is slow and is by its very nature boring. But you guys have asked for it, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut up. I'm going to make this go away, and I'll let you guys hear me kind of going in real time as I work on putting those two skins together and begin the process of riveting all of those suckers together, which again, that cathartic, awesome, amazing thing um, is it's cool. So here we go. Oh, by the way, if there is something you guys want to see, if you do me a favor, comment down below, tell me what you want to see. Uh, that will help me greatly. Uh, also, Full, full disclosure, commenting actually helps with uh, metrics for whatever reason. Uh, the more comments and the more uh, engagement, if you will, with uh, user base, the better the videos seem to do. I, I don't know why. But anyways, all right, I'll shut up. Here we go. All right, guys. Well, here we are. We're, uh, we're to a point where I've got all the skins on for the last time, and I'm going to start doing the rivets. Now, 
Um, some of you have asked me to slow down the footage and give you guys an actual real-time view of what's going on. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, so this may, next bit may seem a little boring because it takes a lot of time. This is not a fast process. It is hot. If you want real time, go sit in a sauna and get good and stinky because I smell. Uh, I've been out here for a while, but I've got I've got both skins on. Uh, the one thing they want to make sure you do is that this seam between the uh, aftmost and forwardmost skins, this seam right here, you want to make sure they lap together perfectly, and they do. There's no uh, no overlap. They, they butt together perfectly. That side didn't. I had to, on the front one, just give it a little, a little rubbing with the file and then it went together perfectly. So happy with that. Um, so now I'm going to start with this double set of rivets here, uh, and, and put those in, uh, three dash fours is what I'm going to be working with. And it looks like the first, I don't know, let's see maybe four. So it looks like the first four I can get with the squeezer and the rest of them is going to be the bucking bar. So, um, and the reason why I do as many with the squeezer as I can is just for consistency. I find that the, you know, the consistency of the squeezer is the same every single time. So I'm going to do the first few uh, with the squeezer and then jump over to start bucking. Now, uh, it does specifically say to avoid uh, or only rivet those that have callouts on the plans. And so what I'm going to do is go through and make sure which ones I should and shouldn't. And I may actually mark on here which ones I shouldn't just so I don't forget uh, and then go from there. But that's that's where we're at. Uh, it's hot. So, all right. So let's get the air over here. I'm going to move the camera over there so you guys see me continue to work and I'm just gonna get to work. Um, I know these two top corner ones don't get riveted, but I think everything else does. Let me make sure with the plans right quick. Yeah. Basically from all of them down are the three dash fours. Okay. This one first. Take that out to get room. Put in here like so. Give me a little piece of tape. Where's my tape? Oh, everything's missing when you need it. Here we go. Put this tiny piece of tape over here to keep it in and to give a good. Look, where's my tester? Here it is. All right, let's see. Whew. I'm gonna need to stand up high on that. Let me get my step ladder. Do, 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 do. All right. Step ladder. Let's see how we can do this now. Hey, let go. All right. Oh, you're in the way. Okay, that one's got to move. It's always something. So now, eh, okay. So this should now let's see what it did. Where'd I put my tester? Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Nowhere near enough. All right. Always under squeeze. And then you can give it a couple twists and squeeze a little more on the second go around. Let's see how we 
I did. There it is. All right. Take this off. It looks like a rivet. And someone is out shooting. <laughs> okay. We have the first rivet. What I'm going to do, though, I think I'm going to flip these heads. I'll make it more consistent. All right, so let's, let's get the next couple. Um, take this out and I'm going to have to pull these as well. Move you down one, take you out. And let's set this one right there. Good. Now, in theory, and we do. We'll do my tester. Good. go. Second rivet set. Okay, so now that I've got two can of anchoring, I can remove these two and get these, basically this next box of them. So once you get the first couple, it, you can kind of speed it up a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four in across here and then these other two in like so and then use a little piece of tape on each the reason I use a, whole piece, a little piece of tape instead of the whole thing is so that it's easier to see which rivet I'm working on. Otherwise, you can kind of lose where the rivet is under the tape. These are, the tape is both to keep the rivet from falling out, which it will not do in this case, but like when you're working up under here or something like that, having a piece of tape to hold the rivet in while you get in position is really handy. But also, it helps keep from marking up uh, the metal, which, I mean, my metal's kind of marked up anyways, but this is, believe it or not, a good thing to do, I find. Now, they do make rivet tape, you know, a special kind of tape they call rivet tape, and I find it's not as good. Um, that's just my opinion, but I just don't think it's as good. All right, so here we go. Rivet number three. And rivet number four. All right, let's check them. Yeah. Once you have the consistency down and you know your squeezer is good, I kind of stop checking after a while and then I'll go back and spot check. But, eh. All right, let's do this sucker. And then this one, and over here, and then right here. All right, so you, some of you might ask, why? how do I know that everything's lining up correctly? I'm pushing this piece flat against the metal, which due to the nature of how this works, that means this piece has to line up with the rivet, so. It always does, so let's pull these guys off, make sure they came out all right. Looks good, nice and flush. 
this does happen with the blue tape sometimes the uh, right at the point where the squeeze and the rivet is it 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 leaves a little little bit of blue on there you got to pull it off it's just a little piece of tape a little ball of tape there we go and so there you have the first eight rivets of the uh, fuselage skin sticky goop um i know these two and these two rivets for whatever reason these two appear to not be done yet so i will go find out what two rivets these are so we have those in too but i'm going to do all of these and then once that's done i'm going to go that way and do the rest of them and then once that's all done i'll go to the other side do the other side and then we'll come back over here and we'll do this way so this one that one then this one that one from the center out which is very consistent to how they do everything else they kind of do everything from the center out when you rivet um in wings and whatnot and in you know, like your flaps and all that it's to avoid twist i don't know how the heck you'd twist the fuselage but <laughs> maybe so anyways i'm gonna keep going i don't think i can go any further with a squeezer though let me see if i can get down to that bottom well, i can go one more layer one more down and then it's to the bucking bar which sucks I wish I could do the whole thing with a squeezer, but there's just no way, obviously. Let's do this for ya. Hmm. It's hot out. I might have to turn my fan back on. <laughs> Turn my fan back on and speed the film back up because I mean this is this is the thing it's uh you guys some of you guys say you want to see stuff in real time but you really don't it's it is a or at least I'll give you a taste of it it is a long process now if you like making things if if this is your gig then you know yeah it's fun but if you don't like a slow, tedious thing, like if if putting together IKEA furniture doesn't just to get you excited, then this might not be the thing for you. Okay. Awesome. And just for consistency. All good. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. No. So, if you guys think that this is the wrong way to do this, if you guys see something I'm doing wrong, as always, please comment down below. Let me know what you think would be a better method uh, for doing this sort of thing because I do not know everything I'm always open to other other avenues and other approaches to do stuff but yeah so now we have to do the bucking bar where is my bucking bar hello bucking bar oh it's over here well been a snake it bit me okay so now we're going to go to a bucking bar and bucking bars i slow down even more i actually do one at a time because that's the other thing that's why i think the squeezer is better is it's faster so now let's see if i can do this without we're gonna go do this Okay, this is going to be really loud. Sorry. I'm 100% sure I will have to mute this for that. And we're going to check it. Perfection. Awesome. Okay. 
And there you go. So that's what I'm going to do for all the rest of the rivets going down the center and that way. How much are my fan back on? It's warm. It's uh, 100 degrees in the hangar. Even though it says it's like 84 out there, that ain't true. Eh, hot 84. All right, here we go. Oh, and I'm I'm not going to show the rest of this in real time because you guys would murder me. So I'm speeding it back up. And there you go, guys. I'm going to go back out to the hangar. I'm at, like I said, I'm at the house right now. But I'm going to go back out to the hangar. I'm going to keep working on this thing. I really appreciate you guys for everything that you're doing. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, do me a favor. Comment down below. Make suggestions. Ask questions. I'll do my best to answer either in video or in a comment. Uh, and if you really like what I'm doing, if you give me that thumbs up and subscribe, that helps all my rankings. If you want to help support the channel, if you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support me. And ultimately, if you want to build your own aircraft through vans you absolutely can any of their products they have a bunch of really nice products so you if you use my uh, builder number which is also linked down below when you order your kit vans sends me a hundred bucks it's no money out of your pocket thank you so very much if i can do it you can do it and i'll see you next time